Welcome back to the Devil's Advocates Radio Show. Dominic, we welcome oh, back yeah. our guest. He is Andrew Seidel, uh, Director of Strategic Seidel. Research Freedom from Religion Foundation. Andrew, welcome back to the Devil's Advocates. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. He's starting here in the upper Midwest. Uh, yeah. Apparently, hell may have frozen over, but uh, oh, yeah, there. sir, let's talk nobody listen to left the radio the context oh. of the capital insurrection and those that participated and what role sort of Christian nationalism might have played in that. Uh, I'll let you lead, Andrew. What do you think the role He's of gonna lie about the groipers watch was in this watch. insurrection? I mean, I think the role of Christian nationalism was absolutely central. Right. I mean, Christian nationalism, for people who aren't familiar with that term, it, it it's not a scholarly debate about where our country came from or how we were founded. It's a uh. sinister exclusionary movement. The goal is to redefine America according to the Christian nationalist identity. It was always and Christian. It was it was white. <laughs> what? And basically, Christian nationalists say, look, we were founded as a Christian nation. We were based on Judeo-Christian principles. Mm, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. We've strayed <clears throat> from that foundation. We've got to get back to our godly roots. And they use this language of return and this striving lie. And fighting <laughs> for return what? to that godly founding to justify all kinds of things, including the insurrection that we saw on January. Putting 6th. their feet up on the desk. Andrew, oh my God. Victimhood play in. I mean, I, I know it's a, a tool of fascists to <laughs> tell people be the victims. And here's who you blame, but how's that factor into wow. their, you know, God fear in Christianity? One yeah, fucking hundred percent projection. They're the majority in the country, and they've been told for decades that they are instead this persecuted minority. Um, Not and, and I, where? I, I think you what? Really saw, I mean, there was there where? two elements. If you go back, they have watch privilege the movie, everywhere. The entitlement what? that these insurrectionists felt as they are attacking the very heart of our democracy, oh. it really boils down to kind of two oh. things, race and religion. I mean, these are- These, these guys turn blind eye. Oh and my God. They were the majority in both senses. They felt that majority. They felt entitled, you know, continually saying, this is our house. Uh, I, I mean, they, they believed they were acting, uh, not just on Trump's orders, but on God's orders to, you know, to make to America a Christian nation again. Uh, I mean, that is what they were they were off to do. I mean, they had signs, Jesus saves, they had in God we trust, make America godly again. They had They think this is bad. Like they think this is in and of itself bad to have in God we trust and in Jesus' name all that. The appeal to heaven flag, proud American Christian. We saw the Proud Boys kneeling in prayer before they attacked the Capitol. We We saw cops kneeling for Black Lives Matter. Okay, they barely attacked the Capitol, by the way. Proud Boys did not attack saw the, the Capitol. People who were actually in the Senate chamber kneeling in prayer. Uh, my favorite slash least favorite was the flag that said, Jesus, my savior, Trump, my president, right? I mean, the the threat of Christian what? nationalism here, you it cannot What's wrong with that? be ignored. And, and I'm glad to say that, you know. They just, they just repeat the slogans and just like they're self-evidently bad. Jesus, I mean, Jesus is my savior, Trump is my president. Like what is... Finally, it seems... What's the problem like with that exactly? And, and the media are starting to wake up to the threat that this poses. You know, I, I published my book in May of 2019, and, and it's not often that you have a subtitle of a book that says Christian nationalism is un-American. And then 18 months later, the Christian nationalists attack the U.S. Capitol and just prove you right. You know, it's not often that you, you get that lucky. Under that circumstance, please don't write any more books here. <laughs> um, you talked about the history. I just, I want to call into these guys, but I want to figure out, I, I don't want to give them my number. That's the thing. Of violence. Um, I'm, I'm quite of aware violence. of the sovereign citizen movement and, and they've, they've had a history of sovereign citizens. So these guys are just pivoting to extreme outliers and like, Oh my God. And they're of course, like conveniently ignoring Antifa terrorizing people for months on end because they're liars. Violence? All but they the do is Christian lie. Nationalism movement. What is their, what's their prior track record? 
I mean, so Christian nationalism has been around for a long time. Uh, there have been various waves of Christian nationalism throughout U.S. history. Are they calling this Christian nationalism because they've cried wolf about Ma white nationalism so many times that it doesn't stick anymore? It doesn't play? Is that why they're saying Christian nationalism? And this is something they're trying to, or they're trying to like rebrand, or they're trying to say that anyone Catholic or you know within the Christian uh, diaspora or what have you. Um, they're going to try to make you associate that with supremacy of some kind that I really do get into in usually the white myth. supremacy. Uh, there was a wave in the lead up to and during the Civil War. Uh, it's actually part of the reason we likely ended up having the Civil War in the first place. There was another one uh, in the 1950s when we got things like under God added to the Pledge of Allegiance and in, in God we trust put on our coins in the Capitol prayer room in the National Day of Prayer. So uh, what? And historically we've seen it how does that disprove that the founding fathers talked about how, you know, white men of good character and, you know, white Anglo-Saxon founded sort of system, you know, were they, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, but also like Roman Catholic, Irish Catholic, uh, Germanic, Lutheran perhaps, but like, yeah. Fear its head. How, how, how does this, like, in God we trust being added to the dollar in the 50s, like, how is that disprove any of that? During times of national fear and crisis. And it often likes to take advantage of those times of national fear and crisis. And Meanwhile, you didn't see it, but earlier this, this grease ball right here was doing, like, a bid on, oh, yeah, buy our sponsored masks unless you want to die from COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. Taking, taking advantage of uh, a crisis, right? Politicizing a crisis like the fucking cold. Certainly is an intense tie-in politicizing a crisis of like uneducated angry blakes who think that cops are trying to murder them because of idiots like you so they go burn cities to the ground and then now all of a sudden you're crying crocodile tears over larpers putting their feet up on the desks dude i gotta get a fake number so i can call in these fuckers <laughs> i gotta <laughs> i gotta figure out with violence um, mm, and the violence again, something done by the right, not really. Dude. A lot of those militia groups that you mentioned believe that they're defending their God-given rights. Um, Jericho March uh, was in, was one of the groups that was at the Capitol. They certainly mm. wouldn't call themselves violent. Uh, the organizers of this wouldn't say that, but they've named themselves after the biblical battle of Jericho in which so what? an entire population is slaughtered, right? The Battle of so Jericho what? is actually a genocide in which the biblical God commands his warriors to sack a town and then kill and burn everything in it. And they You fucking fly communist hammer and sickle flags, okay? What the fuck? Are you kidding me? What? And they were circling the capital, blowing that same horn, right? I mean, so Whoa, while they no. not have been expressly calling for violence, the illusion was very clear for any Christian or anybody who's read the Bible to see. Folks, you're listening to the Devil's Advocates radio show. Andrew Seidel, director of strategic response from the Freedom From Religion Foundation. He's a constitutional attorney, author of the book, oy, The Founding Myth. And you, uh, Andrew, <laughs> thanks for joining us. A pleasure to speak with you once again. And I got to tell you, those flags and, and the signs and the things that you mentioned uh, that the, the religious right brought. Oh, American flags and oh, my God. The insurrection. I took note of the very same day. Uh, I mean, a huge wooden cross, you know, God saves, crosses on the, on the pickup truck. Anti-Christian. It, it was everywhere. Uh, and I, I, the first thing I thought to myself is, what, what would the reaction uh, of the, the United States government or of the, the, the general U.S. population be? <laughs> How would it be different if those were a, brunch, a bunch of brown people with, <laughs> a, you know, a crescent moon and a star flag? They would sit on their asses. We have video evidence of what they would do for several fucking months straight. You liar. You scumbag piece of shit. We have several months worth of evidence. Oh my God. Do you think, do you think there'd be a different... We have evidence of the cops just basically being hands off and barely doing anything. We have evidence of them, what they would do. That's the Andrew. <laughs> Oh, what? absolutely. And I mean, and that's why I really tried to boil it down to, to race and religion being the two These guys are primary evil. drivers of that sense of entitlement that you could see. Um, I mean, and, and we have a direct comparison oh, on the race front lie. with the Black Lives Matter protests earlier this summer. Right. I mean, you saw what <laughs> what the National Guard did around the Capitol uh, because they were torching shit, dude. This, they so, were I mean, torching a, and rioting. Direct comparison. 
Uh, no, it's not. Pair that with uh, a religion that's not Christianity. It's pretty easy to understand what our what what a Trump Christian nationalist government would have done uh, to that kind of violent attack. When Kushner told them not told them not. To no, like he told him not to bring in the National Guard. I mean, until after, like way after the damage had already been done, as far as I understand it. Uh, it like way until way after any of the fucking damage in uh, Kenosha or Minneapolis. I mean, they burned libraries for fuck's sake. They burned libraries. They burned liquor stores. They terrorized people in their apartments. All this fucking crazy shit. But again, putting your feet up on the desk in Nancy Pelosi's office. No, oh, Christian nationalist violence. Andrew, the, you know, I've been lie. calling this the Trump cult for quite some oh my time. God. A lot of people reference mm-hmm. it to, like that as well. How does that cult of personality, if nothing else, play into uh, the, the religious dogma? I mean, they are in this kind of incestuous marriage. Um, the Christian nationalists' entire identity is based on disinformation about the American founding. That we nope. were founded as a Christian nation, that we're based on Judeo-Christian principles, that our laws, Judeo. laws are based on the Ten Commandments, that the Founding Fathers were all evangelical Christians who prayed at the Constitutional Convention, that the Declaration of Independence uh, was written based on the Bible, that we're one nation under God. You know, it, it, I've never heard, well, I've never heard that, are were they evangelical Christians? I think it's widely accepted the Founders were, you know, deists amongst, you know, even like the Boomer Tea Party crowd understands that. Uh, the so-called like QAnon sliver of the population. These guys kvetch over while ignoring the rule, which is Antifa and BLM terrorism and arson, murder, rape, all that fun stuff. That's autonomous zones. Their um, entire identity takes those myths and builds itself around them. And Trump tapped into it in a way that we have not seen uh, in recent years. Uh, and actually the best predictor of a Trump voter in 2016 was not race or religion, but or even economic anxiety, but thinking that the United States was founded as a Christian nation. Uh, you, he was very adept at. It was no, I mean it was. Well, first you said it was anxiety. The left was whining, oh, it's like white supremacy, and you're anxious about immigration. I think that's. I mean, being anxious about mass immigration and like demographic displacement is probably, and also jobs, because that ties into it. That's probably the main thing. He's gonna say Christian nationalists over and over and over again. Um, I think it was anxiety about jobs and immigration and stuff like that and crime to this all those things are real identity you, you you saw it this past summer when he had protesters beaten and gassed so that he could walk <laughs> to church and pose with a Bible right protesters right so masked thugs were going around throwing shit at people right and, throwing like fecal matter at people probably right. It, it also it, this also helps explain, I think, you know, the prevalence of QAnon and some of these other conspiracy theories that we see in in the insurrection. Right. The I, the entire identity is based on disinformation. So it is susceptible 100 percent projection to other strains of disinformation. Andrew, what about the the end timers? Uh, is that is that roll into part of this or is that kind of a separate group or does it, is it all just kind of a mishmash together? I mean that that's certainly part of it, right? I mean, there's there's the excitement for for the end times, uh, for uh, the Book of Revelations to come true, uh, and hastening that. Um, there there's uh, and I do talk Not about at all. This a little bit in the founding myth. I mean, that it's a central element to Christian nationalism, and it's one of the reasons that for I, I just no like this is just outlier shit like people who are bringing about end times or christian nationalist he's they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to scramble the brains of their listeners so that everybody just associates anything christian with who ate supremacy so they're they've realized that you know optically at least to some extent going around calling everybody and their mama a white supremacist that doesn't really fly anymore maybe in their circles it does but they feel like to bring in moderates they have to say christian nationalist right that's probably what it is the trump administration moved our um our uh i've done blanking on the word uh to israel our not assembly Oh, Golan, gosh, uh, okay, but that mean that means that he's a Zionist president, not a Christian nationalist president. I think that's exactly what you meant. I think Dom interrupted and said, "Move the embassy to embassy." Israel. Yeah. yeah, we yeah. all got it there. We put it together. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I can hear in the background the children who are not at school uh, doing something, and I'm 
so I'm half paying attention. Yes, but moving our embassy to Jerusalem is part of this to help hasten the end times. I mean, Mike Pompeo is Ridic. a big was ridiculous. As he was our Secretary of State, and before that, is this big believer in the end times, and they're doing what they can to hasten this. And this is just more of the Trump administration rewarding that Christian nationalist identity and putting that Christian nationalism into the public policy. Andrew, in what conceivable way? This is, is insane. Is there anywhere in the Bible where it says masklessness is next to godliness? <laughs> That's a zinger on lefty radio, eh? Let me hear that again. Next to godliness. <laughs> Public policy. Andrew, is there anywhere in the Bible where it says masklessness is next to godliness? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I that was so fucking cringe, dude. Like, forget boomers. I mean, he might be a boomer or a Gen Xer, but, like, forget whatever your boomer grandpa said that was cringe yesterday. This takes the cake for the absolute most cringy, just disgusting, horrible attempt at humor that I've ever fucking heard in my life. Dude. I'm not, it doesn't... It's just, like, it's not just, familiar with that. I, I uh, The next book I'm writing is called Weaponizing Religious Freedom, uh, and I am diving deep into the idea that churches and believers have a right situated in religious freedom to infect the rest of the country oh uh, wow yeah. no in fact no 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 see we have actually videos on this channel of leftists infecting churches actually like injecting the you know lefty transgender fucking crap into uh you know the, the drag queen story time with kids like the excuse to basically groom kids that the left does yeah, spoiler i come down on the side that they actually don't have that right to kill us <laughs> uh, Quick question. Uh, you don't Joe have that Biden right to kill gave us. A speech okay. from the National Prayer Breakfast. Uh, you know, it's all projection, one hundred percent projection. They want to burn. They want to loot. They want to steal, rape, and kill. And they're trying to convince you that resisting them is the real hate, the real violence. Whew, this pisses this me off. Honored tradition of U.S. Dude. presidents. What do you think of that tradition, Andrew? That is absolutely a Christian nationalist tradition. Uh, Jeff Charlotte wrote about this uh, in, in his book, The Family, uh, which is, became this Netflix special. I think it's episode three. He really kind of gets into this. It's not that, long, that old of a tradition. It dates back to the 1950s, uh, which I already talked about. We saw a wave of Christian nationalism. Um, I, th it, that absolutely needs to be abolished. I mean, a national prayer breakfast, a national anything wow, wow, wow. is a contradiction. Anything religious is a contradiction in terms when you're talking about a country that invented the separation of state and church. I'm a little apprehensive. Yeah, okay, I don't need to be the one to point out that's not actually in there. It's just some other phraseology in another context. It's just that we don't establish a state religion. Allowing somebody to pray is, or, or, excuse me, allowing somebody to pray is not a violation of, yeah, I, mean, I don't need to be the first person to point out that this is just yet another example of all progressives ever do is lie 100% of the time, no exceptions. Since, ask, uh, since you've been scary and prescient in the past, <laughs> but do you have any predictions, Andrew? Where do you think the Christian nationalists go from here? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a really good question. I don't think Christian nationalism is going away. Uh, I actually think that this is probably the beginning. I don't think that whites are going away, but if we can expedite mass immigration and the welfare state, but not for them, we can really do some damage. And then also, you know, sick these Antifa dogs on people, you know, keep the mask mandates and the shutdown orders going. These guys like to sell masks, like, for profit on their show. <laughs> Branded. Something worse. Uh, I mean, yeah. we, you know, again, we've seen these waves throughout American history, and, and those waves leave Christian relics in their wake. Things like In God We Trust and One Nation Under God, and they're relegated back to the fringe. But we have to push them back. Dude just called In God We Trust fringe, and we got to push them back. Hold to the fringe. We got to push them back to the fringe. Push In God We Trust back to the fringe. Right. It's that? up to us. We, we have to fight against this movement. People need to know how to refute and repudiate Christian nationalism, not just with better facts, but with better arguments. And No, he just means like lie, and this is exactly how he's been lying. See, full disclosure, I'm actually a, more or less a secular person myself, but dude, come on, man. Basic understanding of history is, would indicate, you know, there's a huge white Anglo-Saxon Protestant uh, Roman, Irish, Catholic, Germanic, Lutheran, yada, 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 influence on this country. Not just influence, I mean foundational 
uh, structural, whatever the fuck, systemic systems of structural institutions, right? Um, the left laments about that all the time. It's just bizarre. So it's like they've been like, no, the, oh, this is a white supremacist Christian blah, blah, blah country. But then he says, oh, that's the myth of the country. But then he backpedals and says, oh, that's Trump's America. But then he, but then they contradict the head again. It's just and that's like, really what I was trying all, to do. Lying. The founding myth was to give people the founding the tools myth. to help. So, so it's a myth. Okay, so everything the left has been telling us about more white supremacist system, that's a myth up, up till now? To push Christian is, nationalism back to the fringe is, where it belongs and point out that this is fundamentally and irrevocably an un-American movement. But Andrew, if the hmm. Democrats utilize the same invocations as these Republicans have historically, um, how do you draw a distinction, sir? I mean, I think that's a great point. I think it's problematic. Huh? Uh, and, and, you know, talking about the prayer breakfast, you saw Chris Coon, Senator Chris Coons from Delaware, saying this morning, like, no, no, this isn't a Christian nationalist thing. This is about coming together for Jesus. And that may be what he wants it to be, but that's not what everybody else understands it to be. So more gaslighting, it's like, oh, yeah, you can tell us what you think it is and what you intend for it to be. But we're just going to go ahead and tell you and everybody else what it actually is, even though there's no evidence to substantiate any of our claims. In fact, the evidence shows the exact opposite of pretty much every single claim they've made. Lies of omission, lies of commission, you know, complete misrepresentations of what occurred at various rallies. I mean, he's called protesters riots and rioters protesters. It's the same, same schlock. Uh, and there is a very real danger that by not pointing out that under God was added to the pledge deliberately by <laughs> Christian nationalists to foist their God on a country. They've been pointing that out obnoxiously since like 2004, dude, since shit libs center their identity around watching Colbert and fucking, you know what I mean? Like those guys, John, John Stewart or John Lebowitz or whatever his fucking name and is. forced children to repeat it uh, <laughs> when the country was busy with other things. They didn't and force In God them. We Trust was added to our coins during the height of the Civil War when we were literally brothers were killing brothers, right? To, to pretend that those things didn't happen and to pretend that there's not that history and to whitewash it is to invite Whitewash Christian it. nationalism to come back again in another way. In another form. So basically, we have to force all these people to take estrogen shots and uh, Ritalin and, uh, you know, we totally have to, in, you know, soy burgers and uh, impossible burgers and uh, mealworm souffle and cockroach milk. Or, uh, you know, this Christian nationalist movement's really going to come back. <laughs> like, where? Wave in the future. Everything you see is anti-white guy, dude. What and that, so again, that's what I really try to do in the founding myth is to just write this definitive book that disproves these myths and goes after the identity at its heart. We got he wants to go after your identity. They're telling you straight to your face. Thirty seconds left, Andrew. Do you think the Catholic Church should receive another round of PPP? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, another bombshell story this morning from the AP. I mean, they've clearly oh, wow. abused the churches. Never should have gotten PPP money in the first place. That was clearly unconstitutional. Terrible. Andrew Seidel, appreciate it, sir. Director of Strategic Response Freedom from Religion Foundation, Constitutional Seidel. Of the Founding Myth. Thank you so much, Andrew. We'll One star that book. Soon. Anytime, right. gentlemen. Thank you. Or Devil's Advocates, phone lines open, 844-967-2789. Hear that? The phone lines open? Ooh. Right. Well, what does your church tell you about when people say that they're the second coming of God? My reason tells say, me the man is certifiable. I want your opinion, Gary. I would say anybody who comes back and says that, I would say you'd be the Antichrist. I am the chosen one. So Trump, Trump is the Antichrist and Gary by the <laughs> logic? No, I'm not saying he is. But, I'm but he said he's, he's the, the chosen one. I am the chosen, the chosen one. one. By from your God. biblical from logic, God. Donald Trump. Oh, he must have said something. Maybe ironically there. We gotcha. Trump is the Antichrist. Oh. Oh, zing pow! From 3 to 6 p.m. Fucking idiots. America has chosen Joe. Oh, America chose Thank Joe you, Biden? Andrew. Huh? Are these guys really Thank bad? you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Anytime you want me to come on and talk about this stuff, let me know. Have a great night. These guys are fucking yeah. amateur, way more amateur and boomer than I am. Wow.